Hello, welcome to the second lesson for SBA and Report Card in Excel Spreadsheet Programming. So today we'll be looking at how to enter the formula for total SBA, that is the total of the CAT1 group work, CAT2, and then we'll look at 50% uh, for the XBA total here and we'll look at the exams 50% that is 50% of this here so after that we'll look at the total the ground total so here I think we can make it ground We can make it grand total. Okay, so we'll just shift it a little. Yes, so that we can have grand total. Okay. So let's go straight up. Now, assume that the child got a 23 um, under 40, maybe she had 32, and then maybe 21 here. So we want to add the total of this, we want to, we want to total this, one, two, three. So, so the cell name here is 66. Six, C3, D3, and E3. So uh, basically in cell naming, uh, you use the, the column alphabets and then the rule number to name your cell. So the intersection of the rule and column gives you the, the cell name. So the intersection of rule and column gives you a cell. So a cell is referenced by its name. That is the column alphabet and then the row number in C that is C3 here so you can identify each cell by the name now in writing of our formula I'm going to use the cell name referencing I'm going I'm not going to use absolute referencing absolute means uh, just typing in the figures in the cells here to add but when we use the cell name referencing, that means that any figure that will be entered in the, the cells with which the reference is made in the formula, it will be able to calculate for us. In maybe our subsequent lessons, I'll talk more about uh, what that means. But for now, let's stick to how to write the formulas, having known about the cell name. And I know most of you know about how to name a cell already. So let's look at the total. So it's just going to be basically, um, I'm going to use a function, not a formula. There are difference between functions and formulas. I'm going to use a function here. So I'll use the sum function. So we start Excel formulas with an equal to sign. So I'll write the formula and then I'll explain it to you. Okay. So we have the sum, sum, I'm summing this up to this, cut one, group work, cut two. So I am summing my first number, that is the range of cell I want to sum. So I'll close my bracket and I'll press enter. That will give me the total of this. Now, this is a nice formula. Good. But let's take a look. Assume that you present this work and there is nothing in the cell. That means this will be presenting you zero. Zero. Let me just zoom it out a little. Zero. Is that what I want to see in my software? No. 
So there is a way to write a formula so that if there is nothing in this cell, then this cell will also be empty. So that is where it gets quite technical. So let's look at it closely. So I said, I want this cell, this formula cell to be empty when there is nothing here. So I will use the, the if condition. So let's put in the logical test, the logical test. If the sum If the sum of this, this, and this is equal to is equal to zero, then comma. Okay. If the sum of this cell and this cell and this cell, so C three, D three, and E three. So that is a range. So from C three to E three is zero if the sum is zero comma that is our logical test so which value should be true if it is zero then it is true if it is zero then then the cell g3 should be empty so if i said it should be empty then i'll bring double quotes So we set the value for if it is true, then let's set the value for if it is false. Then if it is not empty, that is false, then give me the sum of the range of cells between C3 and E3. So let's, let's look at it again. So we we'll close the bracket. Okay, so we say if the sum of this range of cells from C3 to E3 is equal to zero, then G3 should be left empty. So this is an empty, that's how we write it, double quote. That is the logical test if it is true, for the, for the value that is true. If it is zero, give me empty cell. If it is not true, that is, if it is false, if the value zero is false, if that means if there are, there are, the sum is more than zero, or it's not equal to zero, then give me the sum of the values inside this cell. So that is the sum of the range of cell between C3 and E3. Bracket close, then you close the if. So let's see if that works. And our zero is gone. So let's try a number in it and see. So we have 23, we have 34, we have um, um, 21. So it will just add. So that in case you have nothing at all, <clears throat> you have nothing in this cell, though there is a formula here, it will be empty. We don't want to see zeros in the cells. It's not professional. It doesn't make your work look good. In some instances, uh, someone can put, instead of being empty, let's say a hyphen. Okay? So if there is no value in the cell, it will show a hyphen. I hope you can see it clearly. It shows a hyphen. Okay? So that is how it works for some people. Maybe he doesn't want to uh, leave the cell so empty. But I don't want to see zeros in the cell. I don't want to see zeros in the cell. So the sum of this, if the sum of this is empty, is, is, is zero, then it should show me hyphen. Other than that, other than that means that if these cells are not empty, if these cells, if these cells are not empty, that is maybe there are values in it, then it should start adding the values for me. Okay, so that is how 
the formula works. So that is the first part. Let me show you in Word. So we said if the sum, if, so for the two, uh, SB total, we say if the sum of this range of cell is, is zero, then give me an empty cell. So we have the if condition. This is the this is the this is the this is a structure. The first part gives you the logical statement. So this is our logical statement. This is our logical statement. Now, for the logical statement that you have given, if it is true, it represents the true here. And if it is false, it represents the false here. Then you close your bracket. So one if. So this is the if bracket. Okay, we'll come to a more complex formula uh, function. That's what I'm talking about that. So you close it. So basically, this is your logical statement. If it is true, yes. If it is not true, that is, if it is false, then this. So basically, that is how we write the if statement. We are going to use it more often. I just want it to look beautiful and more professional. That is why I'm insisting that you use that uh, formula so that the cells will be empty now because we are writing the formula for 30 students or more if you want to do that we have a a very nice tool in excel that is the autofill tool autofill tool so when you write the formula for the first person you just do autofill for the rest okay so in this we are just going to we send the mouse to the left corner of the cell for the first one then we double click if it changes to a plus a plus not a small plus uh, not a bigger plus a plus uh, the black plus I hope you can see it. I can just describe it, but there's no specific name for it. It is the autofill um, uh, cursor. So when you point it to the left bottom corner of the first cell that you have entered the formula in, and it changes to this plus small plus sign, then you double click. Sorry, you double click. It's able to give you the the autofill. So I'll just have to drag it to the last cell for the 30th student. Okay. So it's giving us the formula. So I just I just want to I want to center. Yes, I want to center uh, my my input. So I just use center. Okay, so it looks more presentable. All right, so that is the part for the SBA total. So we have uh, let's say you put a figure in it. Um, twelve and. So that is how it works very beautifully. Very beautiful. So that is that for the XBA total. In our next lesson, we'll look at the 50% for the SBA 100 and then the 50% of the examination. So that's what we'll do in our next lesson. Thank you very much.